I'm so excited you could join me today for this super fun project. So this is going to be a little bit of information here about a knit or a crochet stocking. This pattern can work for either the way that it is designed. So really quick, I want to talk about that. If you are going to knit this stocking, you will be using a size eight or five millimeter and knitting needles. I like to use the magic loop method to make this stocking, so I have those. Or if you're crocheting it, you're going to use a four millimeter or a G hook. And this is from We Crochet, and these are from Knit Picks. Everything you want to create this, you can purchase on either Knit Picks or We Crochet. They're kind of a sister company and they carry amazing products. So now let's talk about what's going on here. I am so excited for this crochet or knit course. It is packed full of some fun, fun things. But the main thing is, if you would like in the course, you can start with a blank stocking and design your own. If you prefer, I have a free version pre-designed on the blog that you can follow along with. It's a bit of a crochet or knit sampler stocking. And that one you can jump over to the blog and enjoy for free. If you join the course, you will have access to all these really cool swatches to, to plot out your design along with some graphs. So let's talk about how we would use those. The first thing you'll want to do is print or cut out um, these graphs. So I have so many crochet and uh, color work graphs going on here. If you do not have a printer, do not fret. I'm also going to show you how to use these in a program called Canva, which you can create a free account. And then you can virtually create your stocking by pulling these around on the screen um, by using a mobile device, an iPad or a desktop. But if you are like me and you do have a printer and you do like holding things in your hand, I have 40 40 options, 40 charts available to you. And now I'm going to show you how those work. So what I've done is I've taken them and I have cut them out into strips. This is so it's easy for me to see and to plot, to know what I want to do with this. So you can cut them out and leave them like this, where we are doing this side stays outward. And you can read the instructions of what's on here right here. If you want, you can also take them and fold them on that solid line. And then you can place them on here without the instructions hanging out to the side. So it's really what you prefer, but you have so many options to choose from that you can design your very own stocking to what you want it to be. So this is a great way to experiment with designing and making something that is uniquely your own. So cute. So cute. So you can play with these and move them around. That's why I like this method of being able to cut them out, move them around, or use them on a screen to shift stuff around and see what it would look like. The other thing you can do is I have some smaller charts here that might be a little bit of fillers or breaking up certain designs into certain things. You can always use two of these and place them, you know, top and bottom below that cute little penguin, however you want to do it. So once you pick out your design, and I'm going to kind of throw one on here really quick to show you what I have done as an example. So let's say I want to design something like this. I lost one of my pieces here. Here we go. And look how cute this is going to be. How adorable is that? I love foxes. So I'm actually going to use this design twice. I'm going to use it here and then above the mushroom. Um, I did this a little bit differently where instead of doing these dotted lines, I simply scooched that up. So this is the fun thing too, is you can really uh, do whatever you want to do. So instead of having the dotted lines above and below the mushroom, I simply omitted that first one and moved this up. So you have so much flexibility to do what you want to do with this. It is incredibly fun. So once you've decided, okay, I really like this. I like the way it looks. I'm ready to knit or crochet it. Let's talk yarn. I've also included these cutouts of the yarn color. So this is for the City Tweed DK. All of these cutouts are for the City Tweed DK. There's a few less colors in the worsted, but that's okay. There's amazing choices. So these are from We Crochet or knit picks and you can pick out what other whatever colors you want from these swatches so that you know what you want to order now if you're crocheting it you're going to do the dk weight 
And if you're going to knit your stocking, you're going to do the Erin worsted weight. This is why it works. We're simply just changing needle and hook sizes and yarn sizes to make this size appropriately. And it just works. And I love it that way. Um, the knit version will be slightly longer than the crochet version. It stretches that design just slightly, but not a lot. If you look at last year's event, I did a deer and a polar bear stocking. And you can see the difference. I made one in crochet and one in knit of each. And you can see the difference in those and how it's very minimal. So in order for us to choose our colors and pick out our yarn, I've done these swatches to where you can decide like, okay, I want this section to be green. I want the main section behind here, all this white space to be the snowshoe and then the habanero. I definitely want it to be the fox and maybe these mushrooms. So now I know what I want to do to design the stocking and I can go ahead and order my yarn. Then once I have my yarn, I'm going to follow the pattern from the toe. Then I'll do the graph work for the foot part. Then I'll follow the pattern for the heel. We're going to be skipping this for the knit version and coming back and as well for the crochet version. So we're just leaving an opening that we'll come back and work later. Then I'll do um, this leg part of the color work and then we'll do a ribbed cuff at the top. So you've got it plotted and it's so fun to do this part of it. And then what's really cool is when you see it come together and come to life as a real stocking. How cute is that? So this is what I did to design this stocking just to show you how it's done. This is crochet, but you can also do this in knit. And this was a fun way to plot this design and see it before I did it. And look how it translates so beautifully. I'm in love. I am in love. But the awesome thing about it is we have so, so many choices. We could make endless amount of stockings. It's so much fun for color work and you get to be the designer. So I hope you really enjoy this system. I hope you have fun with it and create several stockings if you like and knit or crochet or both. And what I'm going to do next is we're going to get into this project by starting with the foot, the toe area, and then we'll work through each section. So let's go ahead and get started designing your stocking. I am so excited to have you back for another Christmas in July event. If this is your first time joining me, I have done this several times before. Uh, it's really, really fun and I'm super excited for this year's because we have two options with this. I'm going to show you the free on the blog option which is already put together for you. And it's really, really cute and a little bit of a, a Fair Isles sampler, you could say. And then also you can design your own stocking by following the base instructions of this video, but you can build your own design because we have included some amazing charts with that that can be mixed and matched and moved around. For this pattern today, I'm going to once again be using the City Tweed by We Crochet. I love this yarn. This is the DK weight. It also comes in worsted, but for the crochet version, we're using the DK weight. And I love using this yarn again because I, I'm really enjoying the collection that's working up on my mantle. But you can choose any DK weight yarn you want. Stockings are very flexible. It's not a fitted item. And hey, if it ends up being a little bit bigger, that's fine. That means you're getting more gifts. So I will be using the Snowbank and the Blue Blood and the toad this is the toad colors today for this stocking i will also be using the four millimeter crochet hook this is the dots hook from we crochet i love this set it's an entire set for an amazing price then you'll need a pair of scissors if you want a removable stitch marker not that one sorry about that i was doing my knit video and had a knit stitch marker in there but a removable stitch marker a yarn needle to weave in those ends and if you would like a leather tab. So this is just a strip of leather, faux leather you can buy at Joann's or Michael's. And um, we're going to cut a piece and put some holes in it. I'm going to show you how to do a leather tab on your stocking if you want. So we're going to go ahead and get started. The stocking is worked from toe up. So we'll start by working the toe in the round. To get started, we are going to create a magic ring or a magic circle. And I have a tutorial on that if you want to see it a bit slower. And then we are going to single crochet eight stitches inside this magic ring. Now for this stocking pattern, I want to note that we will be working it in the round continuously, which means we will not be joining it. And for the toe, we are going to be working normal single crochet stitches. But as we get going with this pattern, we will be working split single crochet for all the color work portions. So once you have single crocheted eight stitches. You can go ahead and almost pull that tail closed. You do not want to pull it all the way. 
because it makes it easier for you to get into the next stitch if you just wait to close it all the way. So now that we have A stitches worked into our magic ring, we are simply going to be single crocheting two stitches into each stitch around. This is where I highly recommend grabbing your stitch marker, especially when we're working in the round with crochet. It can be very difficult to uh, know where the beginning of the round was. So for this very first stitch, I'm going to go ahead and mark it with a stitch marker. And then I will work another single crochet into that same stitch. So now I'm going to be working two single crochet stitches into each stitch around, which means we're taking the stitch count for this very first round from eight to 16. Now that we have worked round two, it's time to go ahead and grab our tail and we can finish closing that magic circle or ring. And then you can also use your yarn needle and weave that in if you want to get rid of it so it's not in your way. For round three and every other round from here on out, we are simply going to single crochet into each stitch around, not doing any increasing. So use your stitch marker to keep track of the beginning of the round and for round three, single crochet into each stitch in the round. And for round four, I'm going to move my stitch marker and I'm hoping that the back of my hand will help a bit. I know this is a light colored yarn, so I'm doing my best here. But for the very first stitch of this round, I'm going to single crochet two stitches into that very first stitch. And then of course, take a quick break to grab your stitch marker and mark the first stitch of this round so that we can keep track of that. Then I'm going to single crochet into the next stitch. And that is our repeat around. So we will do two single crochets into the next, and then single crochet into the next stitch. This will take our stitch count from 16 stitches to 24 stitches at the end of the round. And then for round five, we will simply single crochet into each stitch around. So now for round six, we will start by doing two single crochets into that very first stitch. Grab your stitch marker and mark the first stitch of the round. And then we are going to single crochet into the next two stitches. And that will be our repeat around. So we'll do two single crochets into the next. And then we're going to single crochet into each of the next two stitches. At the end of round six, we will have increased our stitch count from 24 stitches to 32 stitches. And then for round seven, we'll simply be single crocheting into each stitch around. And now we are on round eight, and I think you probably see the pattern that we've got going on here. Where round eight is an increasing round again, so we will single crochet two into that very first stitch, marking the first stitch of the round, and then we are going to single crochet into each of the next three stitches. And that's our repeat around for this round. So once again, that is to do two single crochets into the next stitch and then single crochet into each of the next three stitches. For round eight, this will take it from 32 stitches to 40 stitches at the end of round eight. For round nine, we'll single crochet in each stitch around. So here we are in round 10 and you can see how this is starting to take shape and it's going to curl a little bit, which is what we want because this is how the toe of the stocking should look. So I'm gonna move my stitch marker here and for round 10, we will do two single crochets into the very first stitch. And then we're going to mark the first stitch of the round. Then we will single crochet into each of the next four stitches. And that's our repeat around for round 10. So that's to do two single crochets into the next and then single crochet into each of the next four stitches. At the end of round 10, we will have a total of 48 stitches. And for round 11, we will simply single crochet into each stitch around. And now here we are for round 12, which is our last increasing round. So we will start by doing two single crochets into the first stitch, marking the first stitch of this round, and then we will single crochet into each of the next five stitches. 
This is going to take our stitch count to 56 stitches at the end of round 12. And then of course for round 13, we will single crochet into each stitch around. Once we're at 56 stitches, that's going to be the stitch count for most of the rest of our stocking. For the foot, we'll split for the heel, and then we'll have the leg, which is still 56 stitches, and then the ribbing or the cuff. So work through round 13, and then come on back because we will be ready to start the foot of the stocking, which is fun color work. So now that we have worked through round 13, it is time for us to start our color work portion, which is the foot of the stocking. And I want to talk about this chart here. So I will have a chart as well as the written instructions in the pattern and on the blog for this free version. And for round one, you see the dark areas is color B and the light areas are color A. We just finished working the toe of our stocking in color A. And so we're ready to start with color B. Now I am going to be rotating my color B a bit. So for my color B on this first section, I'm going to use the red. And then for the zigzag area, my color B is going to switch to the color green. It's just what I kind of want to do for this to show that even if you have a chart that is in two colors, you can still mix it up and make it more colorful if you would like. So I'm going to start by doing round one and I want to show you how to change colors because that's the first technique we need to learn with this. So what I'm going to do is the very last stitch that we did, I'm actually going to back up a little bit here and undo it. So I, oh, actually I'm going to do it all the way. So for the last stitch, I yarn over and I pull up a loop and this is where I'm going to stop. I have two loops on the hook and then I'm going to grab my new color, my color B, leaving a little bit of a tail end and I'm going to yarn over and pull through that last stitch that was the color A, but now I'm ready to work the color B. I want to note that there is a little bit of color jog in the stocking, but I don't mind it. I'm not doing any extra work, just I'm working continuously in the round to prevent that color jog because it's on the side of our stocking. It's really not noticeable at all, so we can just keep on going. Now I want to talk about the color work portion of this. All of these stitches are worked in split single crochet. This way, we have a beautiful setup that looks knit. So everything on this chart will be worked as split single crochets. Now, what is a split single crochet? You may be wondering if you've never worked one. I'm going to move my stitch marker here and we're ready. We're set up with our new color to work the very first stitch of this next round. And I'm going to show you this on this stitch and after I work it so I, you can see the anatomy of this stitch. Normally we would insert our hook here for a regular single crochet, but we're not going to. We are going to insert our hook in the center of the V on the front, and on the back we're going to come out of the center of the upside down V underneath the horizontal bar. I do have a tutorial with a tan yarn for this that is a much bigger yarn. If you need to see this at, at a closer look, I have that link in the pattern and on my blog. So I'm going to insert my hook right to the center of that V, pull up a loop, and right here, this is the most critical part of the split single crochet. This loop right here. You want to pull that up to be the height of your, your loop on your, on your hook and higher than you're normally used to when you're working a split single crochet before you yarn over and finish that stitch. I'm going to go ahead and mark the first stitch of the round, and we're going to do that again. I'm going to insert my hook in between the front of the V on the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, pull it higher than you normally do, yarn over and finish that. The reason why is the V on the front will be a little bit wider if we're pulling up that second loop when we make it. And we need it that way because when we work the split single crochet, it's a bit, it can be a bit tighter of a stitch if you're not pulling up that second loop. And we want to be able to get right in between that V the next time that we work this round, we want to be able to easily insert our hook into here. If you find that it is difficult for you to insert your hook into the center of the V, it usually means that your stitches from the round before were too tight and the culprit is this loop right here to pull it up and complete that stitch. So this round is simply worked in this one solid color all the way around in the split single crochet and then come on back for the next round. Now I've worked a few rounds because I want to show you a few more tips on some upcoming things that will happen in this pattern. 
So I will be working round five next and I'm going to change colors and I want to talk about how to carry your yarn. So when it comes to doing color work, especially where we have something where we're not going to be seeing the inside of the stocking, but we don't want any floats on the back to be super long because we want to be able to put gifts in here without them catching on the yarn. And also we can carry our yarn up the inside when we switch colors because no one's ever going to see that. So after doing this first section that I did in red, and you can do the whole thing in a solid color. It's completely up to you if you wanted to use red for all the color B. But if you want to switch to a different color like I'm going to here with the color green, you can simply let this sit and kind of work around it, or you can cut it if you want to. But I'll be using it again up here, and I can just carry it up along the side as I go. So for round five, I'm going to start by working the very first split single crochet in this round and marking it. And the very first stitch in this round is the color A. But the next stitch, since it's a color B, I'm going to yarn over and complete my first stitch with that color B, but being sure to mark that first stitch of the round. Then I will work one in color B. And now I'm going to switch back and I'm going to be working three in the color A. Now, when you're switching your colors, it is very important to make sure that your split single crochets still have a great tension to them. You're bringing up this yarn and then yarning over and pulling through. Sometimes I pull it up too much when I'm switching colors so I can tighten it down just slightly, but making sure that it's easy to get into on the next round. Now there are some rounds like the round after this one where I'm working at every other color, kind of how I did here, or we're switching back and forth every three to four stitches. You can practice carrying two yarns in the same hand so that when you're working it, you can easily switch back and forth. Yes, this does take some practice. I also find the tension is a bit harder with the split single crochet when you're working um, two colors at the same time in the left hand. Uh, see, I've already lost that first color here. But when I'm working every other color, I do like to just work them in the same hand so that I can switch back and forth quite easily. I'm still leaving this tension a little bit loose on the back when it comes to our floats so that it doesn't pull our stitches on the front too tightly. So I'll work this all the way around and then I'll come back for the next round. Now for round six, this is where I do recommend practicing um, working from two colors in your left hand or your right hand if you are left handed. Um, because when we're switching other, every other stitch, it takes quite a bit of time to drop your yarn and then pick it up again. And if your tension is completely thrown off, it just takes some practice, but um, it, it's really nice once you learn that skill. So however you want to work it, just make sure that you've got the right tension happening. Now there's something else I want to talk about. This round has worked every other color, but let's talk about what if we had a large uh, group of stitches in a row in one color. And that happens especially on round nine and round 10. We've got a lot of stretches here where we have, we're working one color. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to go off pattern here, and we're going to talk about what to do if we were working long stretches in one color. So usually if I'm working more than three stitches in a row, I like to do what's called catching your float. So here's I work three stitches and on the next stitch, what I will do is I will take the color that I'm not working and lay it over the top of my crochet hook. Then I'm going to complete the stitch and keep on working. So I work a few more stitches and I definitely want to catch my float so we don't have too long of a float on the back. And this is where I will lay my non-working color over my crochet hook and then go ahead and complete the stitch. And what that does is whenever you do that, it's catching that stitch on the back and it's splitting up the length of that float so it sits nicely, allowing the front of your work to look its best. And that's how we're gonna catch those large floats on these later rounds. I'm gonna go ahead and let you work up all of this color work from this chart, working from bottom to top and right to left. And there's also written instructions in the pattern and on the blog. And then I'm going to come back after we work this section so that I can show you how to do the heel because we'll complete the color work for the for the foot of the stocking and then we're going to leave an opening for the heel. So after you get this color work done, come on back and we'll talk about the next steps. So now we have worked the foot color work portion of our stocking and it's time for us to split for the heel. So in order for us to do this, 
we are going to be working the first 17 stitches in this round. So I'm going to go ahead and move my stitch marker. This is with color A. I'm going to work the first 17 stitches in the split single crochet stitch. Now after working those 17 stitches, the next step that we're going to do is to chain 22. So we're just going to simply chain 22, not too tight, just chain 22. Now after chaining 22, we're going to go ahead and skip 22 stitches. So just count across for 22 stitches and then skip them. and then split single crochet into that next stitch. And this is where we're working the stitches to the end of the round. And the stitches that will be worked after chaining 22 and skipping 22 will also be 17 split single crochets to the end of this round. And this is how we are going to make space for the heel, which we will come back and complete later. So as we can see, we have this oddly shaped thing going on here. Now we have this chain hanging out. And you may be going, why did we do that, Brianna? But the reason why is because this chain, we're going to work across the top of it and everything here will be left open for us to come back and work that heel later. So we will start working the leg of this stocking, which is another section of color work. And we'll start by working round one and then moving up through all 47 rounds. But round one is just a simple plain round of the split single crochet in the color A. And that's also by design a little bit because when it comes to the split single crochet stitches, we have to um, work them into the chains as just regular single crochet until we can come back on the next round and work the split single crochet. So when you get to these chain stitches, you're simply just going to single crochet across them. And then on the next round, you'll go back to working them as split single crochet and then you'll continue to work up this section of the color work this is relaxing and fun but also it does need your attention sometimes i know for me especially with color work like this when i'm either reading it from a chart or I'm doing it from written instructions it takes a little bit more concentration than say you know a double crochet blanket but enjoy the process so i want you to work up the foot and then come back and we'll be doing the cuff so now that I've got the leg of the stocking, you can definitely tell this has quite a bit of lean to it. This is why I always recommend, especially with this style of crochet, to block it when we are done. Because when we block it, we can pin it or put um, you know, even some cardboard on the inside to shape it. And we can rotate that lean and block it out so that we have our design looking the way that we want it to with these more centered on the stocking. But at this point, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to do the cuff. Now, you can do the cuff in any color you want, but I'm going to change back to my color B, and I'm going to do the cuff in the color B. And, this, and for the color B for this section, I am choosing a green. Now, if you do change colors, I tend to recommend doing one slip stitch before starting this next part because it does just even it out a little bit. If you have switched colors, you can go ahead and fasten off your color A as it is not needed anymore. I have some left that will be just right for the heel. So I'm going to set the color A aside, but I will come back and use it for the heel. Now the next thing I'll do is I want to make a taller cuff so that when it, I use it as a fold over cuff, it looks really, really nice. I'm going to start this by chaining 25. Now, once I've chained 25, I can see if that's the height I want once it's folded over. It's a really nice thick cuff, which I like. Um, you can chain more or less depending on what you want to do for your stocking. So I'm actually going to be starting in the second chain from the hook. So we'll have a total of 24 stitches across here. And I'm going to single crochet into each stitch across. And that will be a total of 24 stitches. So I'm just going to work across these chains back down to the top body of this stocking. Now that I have single crocheted across the 24 stitches, I am going to slip stitch the current stitch from the top of the body that I 
had slip stitched into before and in the next stitch. So I'm slip stitching two from the top of the body of the stocking. And now I'm going to rotate my work here. And I know this is curling. It'll stop curling here in a minute. But we are simply going to be working our way back down the, what we just did for those 24 stitches. However, I want to point out that we are going to be skipping the two stitches that we just slip stitched. And from here on out, we're working in the back loop only. So skip two stitches. And then in the back loop only, we are going to single crochet into each stitch across, keeping it at 24 stitches. So I'm going to do this all the way across to the end of this row. And now that we worked that all the way across, we're going to go ahead and turn our work again. And we are going to chain one if you want for a turning chain. And then working in the back loops only, we are going to single crochet into each stitch across. Now, if you want for the very first stitch of this row and when you work back the other way for this edge, you can single crochet through both loops just for the edge stitches. And it does give a bit of a cleaner edge on the top here. We're going to work in the back loop only for 24 stitches all the way back down this. So we're just repeating kind of what we did before. And now that we've single crocheted across here, we're going to slip two from the edge of the body. So we're slipping the next two stitches from the top body of the stocking. And then we're going to turn again and we're going to skip those two slip stitches. And then working in the back loop only, we're going to single crochet across again and so it's these last two rows that you repeat over and over working all the way around the top of this stocking creating this nice ribbing that will fold over and look quite nice and then i will show you when i get back to here after working all the way around on how to join our starting row with our last row now if you don't want to make ribbing that is a fold over you can do half the amount of stitches and that's fine or whatever height you would like so i'll work this and then i will be back to show you how to join those and here we are back around. So we're ready to join our first edge with our finishing edge. And I am going to go ahead and chain one. And then I'm going to insert my hook into the back loop only of my current row and grab the loop from my first row and then yarn over and slip stitch those together. And this is what I will do all the way down here. So I'm going to go through the back loop of the row closest to me go through the loop of the first row we did, yarn over and slip stitch those together. By doing this all the way around, all the way down, it will create a nice finished look for the top of this ribbing. And after working all the way down, we can go ahead and we can fasten this off, grab our yarn needle and weave in that end. And it looks really nice as a fold down ribbing or if, if you're not folding it down, that's just fine too. Um, you can, it looks really nice as a higher ribbing without a fold down. Folding this down looks great. And now we are ready to go back to our heel and complete our heel. So now that we're ready to work the heel, I'm going back to my color A and I'm leaving a little bit of a long tail just in case I need to close any gaps on each side of this heel for this first round. We might see some, but I'm also going to show you how to reduce that as we go. So I'm going to attach to the very first stitch here along the bottom and I'm going to single crochet 22 stitches across the bottom and then we'll work across the top. But when I get to here, I wanna show you a little trick. So now this is the last stitch along the bottom and what I like to do before I turn and start working along the top side is because if I were to finish this stitch and then start my next stitch, which would be over here, it's going to leave a hole. So what I can do is I can kind of work a single crochet two together or even three together by picking up some spaces in that corner, yarning over and joining all those together. And that way it will reduce the gaps by grabbing that corner. I haven't added any stitches. I haven't decreased any stitches. We're just pulling that corner together. And then I'll go ahead and I will work the 22 stitches across the other side of the heel. And I'll do that trick again towards at the end of this round, but we will not join. We're going to work this continuously. I also want to note that I tend to tighten down my tension a bit on these heels. I've done them quite a few times and I find if I really tighten down my tension for the heel or even go down a hook size, it helps it lay a bit better. So I'm going to work this all the way to the end of the round and then come on back. 
Now this is where it's not a bad idea to grab a stitch marker to mark the first stitch of the round for this stocking. But we're going to be decreasing this now and everything's going to be worked in single crochet stitches so we're not going to be working in the split single crochet and we're going to start by doing a single crochet two together for the beginning of this round and then we're going to go ahead and mark that stitch as the first stitch of the round and then we're going to single crochet into the next nine stitches and repeat that. So it'll be single crochet two together. Oh, I just worked that as a split single crochet. We're doing regular single crochets. So single crochet two together, single crochet nine, and repeat that all the way around, and it will decrease to 40 stitches. And now for round three, I'm going to move my stitch marker and I'm going to single crochet two together, and then mark that as the first stitch of this round, and then we will single crochet in the next eight. And that's what we're going to continue doing is like just decreasing the amount that we're single crocheting in between each decrease for each round. So for round three, single crochet two together, single crochet eight, and then repeat that around. Now for round four, we're gonna single crochet two together. And I just wanna show you really quick, if you wanna do an invisible single crochet two together, you would insert your hook through the front loop only of the first stitch, and then the front loop only the second stitch yarn over and pull through those two front loops yarn over and complete that decrease and that's what makes it less noticeable but i'll be honest with this tweed yarn it really hides the decreases anyway so it's not as critical to do that but if you want a just slightly cleaner look you can decrease that way so for round four we're going to do single crochet two together and then single crochet seven and that's what we will repeat all the way around decreasing by four and at the end of the round four you will have a total of 32 stitches for round five we are simply going to do a single crochet two together and then single crochet into the next six stitches so i think you see a pattern here because then for round six we will doing single crochet two together single crochet in the next five stitches and repeating that around and then for round seven we will do single crochet two together single crochet in the next four stitches and repeat that around and then we'll come back for round eight. So at the end of round seven, you'll end up with 20 stitches and then you'll come back for round eight. So now that we are on round eight, we have a total of 20 stitches here and we are going to decrease again by doing a single crochet two together all the way around. So we are going to decrease this from 20 stitches to 10. So now that we have decreased this to 10 stitches, we can go ahead and fasten off and grab our yarn needle. We'll pull our end through and place our yarn on our yarn needle because we do have an opening here that we need to close. So when I look at this opening, I'm gonna pull it this way here. We are going to be going through the front loop only of every single stitch around. And what this will do is it will allow us to be able to pull this closed. So go through the front loop only of all 10 stitches. And now after going through the front loop, we can go ahead and just tighten that down and look how nice that looks. And then we'll wanna really secure in this end and weave it in. And we'll wanna weave in any other ends we see in the stocking because we are done crocheting. Now the last thing we wanna do for this is block it. You definitely wanna block it. It helps with the heel. I also find that sticking a piece of cardboard in here is great for displaying it if you aren't putting gifts in it yet. So I like to grab a, a, some cardboard box from my recycling and I'll place this on top of that cardboard box and I will trace about one fourth inch out from each edge of the stocking and then I will cut out that piece of cardboard and put it inside of here. Lightly spray it. It helps it block because you can like shift the top of here, get it really nice before you spray it to take out that lean. And it's almost like ironing your clothes and it looks super nice if you do block this. Now, whether you make a knit or a crochet stocking, you may want to put a tab on each side so that you can hang it. Otherwise, you can't hang it. I have instructions in the pattern where if you would like and you would prefer, you can create an I-cord tab. Or another simple way to do so, if you have a couple tools, is with faux leather or leather, whichever one you prefer, 
Um, I found this one that kind of matches this fox stocking quite well, so I'm going to use that color there. And then I just cut out another a couple strips from scraps that I found at the craft store, just long rectangles. The next thing we will need to do in order to create this style of scraps is take a leather hole punch, and I'm going to punch four holes on each side in almost a square style shape where I punch them. So I'll do two down here, and then two more. I'll show you this on camera where I'm, and then I'm just estimating, honestly, it looks really cute and really good no matter how it comes out. Um, so kind of pull those out. So now we have these four um, hole punches. And what we will do is we're going to do that again on this side. And then we'll they'll place these inside on the edge. And we're going to take our tapestry needle and our yarn. And we're simply going to stitch an X on here a few times and weave in our ends to secure it. But it's a cute way to join this as a tab. And that way we, we can hang it. Now the other nice thing about stitching this to the side, so even if you do an I cord, it's not a bad idea to stitch it a little bit farther down on the edge of the stocking. And the reason why is it helps kind of tack down the fold over cuff if you did a fold over cuff so that it um, stays in place. And the other thing you can do while you've got your needle and your thread happening here is you can weave over and you can tack down this side too so you don't have it like plopping up or down if you want, if you think it's gonna be an issue. But tacking just down this side really helps a lot. And on the inside of this, yes, I am a little bit lazy here where I just tend to tie it down. I'll tie this knot really tight a few times and cut it. I'm not really worried. I've, I've never had these come undone, but if they did, it'd be a quick fix with a needle and thread. And now I have completed, completed this stocking. We have gorgeous tabs to hang these from wherever we like to hang our stockings, fireplace or a mantle or just on the walls. Um, this is really, really fun to make. I hope you've enjoyed this project and come back for some more fun projects soon.